G'day there, Glenn Morris from the Smart Energy Lab and today we're doing the surprise unboxing. Now I don't even actually know apart from the brand name what's in this box. So uh, I've already cut the lid on it just to check there's something in here but I haven't actually investigated it further. So let's have a look at what's in the box today. So here at the Smart Energy Lab, we do a lot of product reveals, uh, look at some of the features, and also with the lens of Australian New Zealand standards. Uh, I, I look at how this product would comply and some of its advantages and disadvantages, and also just some of the basics around its features and characteristics. So the first thing we'll discover is, of course, um, the warranty document and some documentation. Uh, we've also got uh, some of the mounting hardware and connection plugs and sockets. Check it out. That is the mounting strip um, that goes on the wall. It's pretty lightweight. It's very compact. Um, it gives you, because it's aluminium, I imagine you can find uh, other locations to drill through it if you wish, but it's got some pre-drilled holes. It's got the ubiquitous Wi-Fi stick. Pretty much most of your modern grid tie inverters are connected via Wi-Fi to the customer's LAN. It's a, a very convenient way of uh, installing uh, a communication device suitable for the country that it's being sold to. So this will be suitable for Australia. Um, it's got uh, a connection uh, port and a locking mechanism so that it won't fall off. So that's pretty nice. Uh, so that's the Wi-Fi module. We'll look at that in a bit more detail. Now here's the thing I really starting to focus on a lot, and it's not the hardware, it's the software. In fact, it's the boxware. What we've got here is cardboard packaging, um, kind of like egg carton material. I really am struggling with the amount of waste that comes with a lot of products that you can't recycle. Um, high density foam um, packaging may be very good at protecting a product from damage and transport, but it can't be recycled easily. Uh, whereas some soft cardboard like this does the same job um, and it's uh, uh, very easy to dispose of. I can feed it to my worms even uh, if I don't want to put it in the recycle. So hats off to Soul Planet for uh, environmentally friendly packaging. So inside here is the main event. Let's uh, get it out. Oh, it's so light. Wow. Check it out. Now I just realized I told a lie. I have opened this before because it hasn't got the pla plastic wrap on it. So uh, I, I've got quite a few of these inverters here and this is one that I must have taken out of the box and removed the plastic wrap. Generally, even though they've got cardboard packaging, they'll still for moisture protection put a plastic wrap around there, which is a minimal amount of soft plastic. And uh, many facilities are now offering recycling for soft plastics as well. So it's not totally unrecyclable. So anyway, what can I see at first glance? Um, uh, a relatively lightweight inverter uh, with integrated heatsink, of course. Uh, there is the mounting bracket on the rear here. So I guess this clips in in here somewhere like this. Uh, there's your mounting bracket. There's no fans, so there's no moving parts. And what we've got here is uh, all the connection ports. Now, straight up, there's something I really like about this. You probably know already. It's the integrated DC isolator that's lockable in the off position because there is a little tab that you can put a padlock through so you can put it in the off position and lock it with a, with a padlock or a cable tie or other means. This unit, uh, if the manufacturer has a declaration of compliance to Amendment 2 of uh, 5033, 2014 that the uh, there is no serviceable parts inside which I'm pretty sure there isn't uh, these days most inverters come as a sealed product some of them even put warranty void if you open them so there's no serviceable parts inside all the connections are done uh, on the external surfaces of the inverter so we've got a dual MPPT one two a lockable DC isolator we've got our Wi-Fi module that connects in here uh, we've got a comms port, now this may well be for services such as uh, an uh, energy meter or a current transformer upstream and we've got our AC port which we will connect a, 
flexible lead to to an AC isolator adjacent to the inverter. So that's the first look. What else can we see? Uh, on the front here is the display. Now, because it's not on, you can't see anything, but there's actually just some LED lights on here. So this is a, a very basic display, but what good thing about LEDs is they don't fade. Uh, they have a tremendously long life and they provide simple information about normal and abnormal function of the device. That's often all people want to know. Is it working? Because if they want the details, they're going to go and use the app and find out all the details from the app itself. And that's where the Wi-Fi connectivity comes in. So to look at the spec sheet on the side here, like I said, I actually haven't even read it. So let's just have a quick look at what's on the side here. So this unit uh, has a maximum input voltage of 1000 volts, an MPPT range of 125 to 950 volts. It's got two 12 amp inputs on the MPPT with a short circuit um, absolute rating of 18 amps. Now I really like that because you need that extra headroom when you have to allow 25% over the maximum short circuit current of a PV array. That's from our PV array standard, ASNZS5033. Uh, it's suitable for three phase. So this is a three phase inverter. Now, I didn't even realize that picking this up. It's so small. This is a three phase inverter, wow. And it's rated at 5,000 watts or 5,000 VA. Um, IP65, so it can go outside. Those are the basics of it. So this very small, compact, lightweight, easy to install, three phase, five kilowatt inverter. The beauty of three phase is the balancing that it does for you. So it's balancing across all three phases. So you're not getting a, an imbalance in voltage on your phases because you're putting all the, uh, injecting all of the, the, the generation onto just one phase. You're spreading it across all three evenly. That's a nice thing. Um, and often uh, you, having multiple inverters, you really do want to spread that um, across all three phases. So you could have three of these, for instance, and in most jurisdictions still be within the limits for um, a system uh, on a domestic installation. So really nice, uh, compact, lightweight, efficient. Um, I'll put all the specs up on the screen so you can see more about them. But one point that I just touched on, which I've actually done a separate video on, so you can see that uh, up here in the, uh, the link, which is uh, about the DC switch. Now, this DC switch here, um, what the requirements are, and also when selecting an external DC isolator, if one is required. So it depends on your jurisdiction. If you're in New Zealand, currently you don't need one, um, or probably never. Uh, in Australia, currently you do need one adjacent to the PV array. Um, but this is the integrated DC isolator for the inverter. So hats off uh, to Sol Planet for doing that. It makes the life of the installer so much easier. Anyway, that's the Sol Planet. Five kilowatt, three phase inverter. Thanks very much.